And how did you end up going to New York for the the first time there? Well, I uh, well, like I said, I, I went into uh, New uh, t- to Dallas, and yeah. uh, that's Red Bastine and everything. And a guy named Mike Pedusis, an old timer from Steubenville, Ohio, who was good friends with Bruno, was living in Dallas and. Uh, uh, he hung around the wrestling business. He, you know, he he wasn't wrestling anymore, but he he came and he saw me, and I guess he he ended up saying, hey, you know, he liked my style or something, and so he called Bruno, and then Bruno ended up. Bruno was always probably looking for somebody, you know, somebody new to work against, you know, and somebody fresh. So. Uh, Anyway, Bruno called me, and then Bruno called uh, Vince, and then Vince called me, and so, you know, Red Bastine was uh, really nice as a booker. I was I was involved a little bit. I was the, like the number two guy. The Stomper was the number one guy in the Dallas territory, and Jim J.J. Dillon was his manager, and they were the top for sure, the top heel. And then I was kind of like the number two guy, but. You know, I knew exactly where I was, and I liked that. You know, and uh, but anyway, so Red Bastine gave me my blessings and say, "Hey, go on." You know, and uh, I appreciate you know him probably giving me a good word. And anyway, that's how I got there. Mike Pedusas. So it was planned from the start that you were going to have the matches with Bruno. Well, I don't know if it's planned. I yeah. mean, that was the way that the system worked in yeah. the old WWF. You know. Uh, Bruno was the champion, and they would bring in different, you know, top guys. And I was not a top, you know, I wouldn't consider I, you know, a top guy. But they had uh, Bruno was working when they brought me in. He was working with superstar Billy Graham, Ernie Ladd, and Ivan Koloff. I mean, three of the top top heels in the whole country at the time. So they, you know, you you went through that, and uh, they were. So at the time I came in and I ended up working against uh, Bruno, uh, they were through working, you know, the way the system was, uh, they were through working with Bruno in the garden, but they were still going to be working with him in Pittsburgh and Boston and Philly. And so all those guys, you know, y- you'd work all the way around the whole territory. And we've done a few interviews with Billy Graham, so I'll just bring it up. Uh, what were your memories of knowing him over the years? Uh, well, you know, he uh, he 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 was he was like a the top guy. You know, I mean, uh, he was one of the top guys that I was following, and uh, you know, I ended up hurting Bruno. So you know, I mean, uh, I slammed him on the back of his neck and broke his neck and you know he was uh, luckily it, it didn't have any kind of nerve damage but it, it did hurt him and he was out and so Billy Graham and Ladd and all those guys you know and Koloff they didn't get a chance to finish their run right so it cost me cost them a lot of money you know that they they should have been making so but they never outwardly ever ever held it against me you know and uh Things like that happened, but I'm sure I, I cost them a lot. And, and you mentioned the uh, breaking Bruno's neck. Uh, did Bruno hold it, any type of uh, animosity towards you? Over he that? never showed that, and to this day, you know, he's just been the classist act. And uh, you know, we had a chance here lately to touch base with each other at the at the. Uh, uh, WrestleMania in Dallas, and uh, you know, we got a chance to. My family got to meet and meet and meet him and everything, and he he's just been a class class act. And I mean, he gave me some good advice. He said, "Don't stay around forever, you know, and and get beat down, you know. <laughs> so you know you can come back." And so I kept that, and that and I kept that advice to me, and and uh, followed it, and it uh, got heat with the, some of the the higher ups of. Uh, WWF at the time because you know I wanted to maybe come back and work against Bruno against and uh, you know so I, I follow his advice. What was the Shea Stadium match like with uh, with Bruno because that was such a huge event at the time? Yeah it was you know uh, you know they, of course it was a combination of uh, you know Muhammad Ali and uh, you know uh, Inoki and then uh, uh, 
Andre fought Chuck Wetner, you know, here in, in New York. And then I, you know, Bruno came back from his broken neck, you know, against uh, against me. And uh, so they closed circuit that all all around the United States. I guess they, you know, in different territories in the NWA and everything. But I heard only 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 in the the Vince's territory that uh, did it really draw any kind of money. And uh, mainly it was. To see Bruno come back, it wasn't to see Stan Hansen or anything. It was, it was to see Bruno come back, and uh, it was it was a it was quite impressive, and uh, yeah, people were you know really excited to see Bruno come back. They hadn't done a stadium show in that territory for a while, I don't think before that. You know, I heard that they had done something one before with Pedro Morales and somebody in New Jersey, or I, you know, I don't know where it was, but. Uh, but anyway, uh, this was Shea Stadium. Of course, it's gone. But uh, you know, it's uh, it was you know, about forty thousand people or something. I guess I I, I can't remember. But uh, it was it was good, and and they closed circuited it all around their territory, and evidently it did good there too. 